Hey, how's it going, YouTube? Kenny here. So today we're just going to do a really quick update. We're going to talk about Fed meeting minutes, and uh, we're also going to talk about kind of uh, everything we have on the plate uh, coming up here for Redcliffe Research. I think you're going to like uh, all the things that we are working on. And because of that, obviously, you're going to get videos like this where we're just going to talk about one or two news bits and uh, maybe a little bit about data and maybe sometimes answer some user questions. And sometimes we'll maybe look at a chart or two. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to kind of uh, set the stage and kind of uh, manage expectations going forward. Uh, so if you do see a video like this, uh, it's essentially our kind of way of um, getting some stuff out to you, uh, getting out some good quality content, but without kind of... Uh, overdoing it like we tried to do sometimes here uh, on Redcliffe Research. And so this is one of those one take days. So if you like the one take Kenny, uh, this is when you get it. Uh, but essentially we are working towards more quality videos, more production quality. We have a bunch of docu-series in the pipeline, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that said, uh, the Federal Reserve did meet uh, and there was, um, they met for March and the meeting minutes were basically published. Um, basically, they want to keep the accommodative policy in place. And I'm just going to read here from CNBC. So reiterating a recent policy switch, officials at the meeting said the policy will only be changed once the outcomes are achieved and won't be adjusted uh, based on forecasts. Okay? Uh, the meeting summary indicated that while officials saw the economy gaining substantially, they see much more progress is needed before an ultra easy policy changes. Members also said that the $120 billion a month in bond purchases were providing substantial support to the economy. In addition, the committee, committee raised its outlook for economic growth and inflation ahead. The medium GDP in 2021 went up to 6.5%, a big upgrade from 4.2% expectation in December projections. That's massive. So almost a 2%, 2.3% uh, uh, increase in the actual forecast. So as you can see, the economy, the GDP, uh, the production of the US, which generally leads to a stronger dollar, is increasing. So those are all good signs. So you can expect the economy to surge as uh, COVID cases uh, come to their finality, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, and there's no mutated strains. But essentially, we have seen good data on COVID cases decline, and so that is optimistic for me. Uh, I think people are being hyper-cautious, but I think so far, so good. I know Europe is not doing so good. In fact, the country I'm in is not doing good at all. And uh, that seems problematic, but I think, you know, we are turning the corner and the data is proving such. So uh, with all those things and uh, barring any other unforeseen kind of mutant variants, I think we should be relatively fine. Nobody has a crystal ball, but that's my palm reading, of course. Um, anyways, officials uh, also indicated uh, that the unemployment rate could fall by 4.5% by the end of the year, uh, and inflation could run up 2.2%, slightly above the Fed's uh, traditional 2% target. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the update from the Fed. Uh, and, you know, if you're asking me, you know, Kenny, are you still bearish or still bullish? You made that video yesterday. Just remember the data I presented yesterday is strictly that data. Um, while you can interpret it in many ways and there are, there is what I would call signal there uh, because it's a two sigma event, you know, 95% chance or better that it never happens. Um, but still, um, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of the folks that are, um, you know, really good market forecasters, really good market technicians are calling for a very surge, very big surge or a very big bull run for April. Uh, so, I mean, again, um, you can't really predict. And if you looked at yesterday's video, you saw that, you know, there was definitely, you know, sometimes it took one, two, three, four <laughs> uh, months before the decline. And I'm just showcasing that, you know, the data does suggest that maybe there might be a decline coming. Um, but, you know, we don't know when that is. So, you know, if you are risk on right now, that's probably great. Um, you know, did I deleverage some positions? Yeah, I did. Um, but, you know, that's just based on my individual trading style and uh, just the way I invest. So, I mean, obviously, you know, you should out always structure your strategy based on your own uh, investing kind of principles and your investing uh, kind of outcomes and what you want out of investing. Right. What do you need the money for, et cetera? Uh, so just some things we're working on. So we are working on a fundamental analysis video. I'm hoping to get out that out tomorrow. Actually, that's in the queue right now. It's basically, I'm showing casing like for newer traders, like 
uh, where is this shortcut? Like I'm trying to provide a shortcut for like intrinsic value and maybe making pricing models for yourself. So you can take a stock and say, okay, you know, based on the way that I look at stocks and the way that I think about things, these are the inputs that you could put into it. And then this could be the solution to the problem, right? So how to actually evaluate stocks. So we're going to do that probably tomorrow or the next day, but probably tomorrow. Uh, we also have a Maxar stock analysis and Nathan's leading that chart. By the way, congratulations to Nathan. He got accepted to Harvard, so I'm sure he won't be doing any more Innovation Lab stuff uh, that much. But we'd love to see him when he has a second to stop in and stop by. And uh, definitely part of the family uh, at this point. So, um, But please welcome, uh, please congratulate Nathan if you see him, especially if you're in the Slack chat. Uh, monumental, awesome. Uh, <laughs> Harvard's lucky to have him, for sure. Um, we're also going to talk about the Biden infrastructure plan. We're breaking that down. Tommy's taking uh, his time to dissect that, but uh, it's still pretty sparse and there's not a whole lot going on right now. So we're waiting for more details, but we are diving deep into that and trying to get ahead of that play for sure. And then finally, we are going to do a deep dive on semiconductors. So we're going to talk about it as a national security policy play uh, and how we're going to go ahead and position based on that. But, you know, a lot of it's going to be obviously about TSMC and Taiwan and that whole issue. Uh, it's going to be an international politics kind of docuseries. So it's going to be pretty elaborate, pretty in-depth. So uh, working on that one right now, too. So really um, excited to share that with you. So, all right. Uh, that's all I have for today. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everybody.